right friends welcome to the discussion of this week this week is from february 9th to 15th and as usual every week current affairs will have three modules out of which one is in the lecture format and two are in the question and answer formats and let us start this lecture format before going into the details let us look at what are the important events that took place during the week first and the foremost is spectacular victory of aam aadmi party in delhi peace summit at uh, mins in belarus with regard to the ukraine crisis grand take off of uh, the world cup cricket in australia and new zealand conclusion of the national games in kerala and several awards grammy awards bafta awards and several prizes so let us look at these events one by one right let us go into the first aspect of the week that is the victory of aam aadmi party aam aadmi party led by mr arvind kejriwal achieved a spectacular victory in the delhi assembly elections we have already discussed delhi has out of 70 assembly seats aam aadmi party secured 67 seats and bharatiya janata party could get hardly 3 seats and indian national congress drew blank out of 70 seats 67 seats were won by aam aadmi party 3 won by bharatiya janata party and if you look at the vote share here there is a glaring difference here you see the distance of one party with the other is huge here aam aadmi party got 54.3% votes getting more than 50% vote share in the elections where three parties contested is a spectacular achievement and the middle classes down trodden people tilted towards aam aadmi party whatever the reasons are and aam aadmi party could get 54.3% vote share whereas bjp could muster hardly 32.2% but the pathetic story of indian national congress is they could get 9.7% vote share right so the spectacular victory of arvind kejriwal put lot of responsibilities on him in his perception to bring delhi out of corruption right so here i would like to tell few more points here about mr arvind kejriwal he is basically from haryana graduate from iit kharagpur in mechanical engineering later on joined indian revenue service but he could not stay in job for longer time he started a non governmental organization parivartan parivartan is basically into looking into the grievances of down trodden with regard to the welfare schemes like public distribution system and subsequently he resigned the job of irs and associated with india against corruption movement of anna hazare and subsequently he started aam aadmi party and within one year he could able to get 28 seats in 70 member assembly in the elections held in december 2013 and with the support of indian national congress he became the chief minister in the month of december 2013 but he resigned after 49 days because congress could not support his jan lokpal bill now in these elections he got spectacular victory by winning 67 seats out of 70 seats and this is one of the spectacular victories in the history of uh, indian elections because 67 seats out of 70 is normally a rare achievement but if you look into the record books in the year 1989 sikkim sangram parishad in the year 1989 sikkim sangram parishad got 32 seats out of 32 seats that means 
they got all the 100% seats. The second spectacular victory is in the year 2009 when Sikkim Democratic Front got all the 32 seats. So, these type of spectacular victories occurred only in a state like Sikkim. Sikkim is very small state, but in Delhi, the victory of 67 seats out of 70 is a spectacular performance. So, he is sworn in as the Chief Minister of Delhi along with Mr. Manish Shishodia, a long term associate with him as the Deputy Chief Minister and five more ministers. So, total seven member cabinet including the Chief Minister sworn in in the national capital and no woman minister in the cabinet. The second issue is three member SIT to probe anti Sikh rights of 1984. I would like to tell brief history about this event. Srimati Indira Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of the country, was assassinated by her own security guards on 31st October 1984 and subsequently anti Sikh rights took place. Anti Sikh rights took place not only in Delhi but in the adjoining states where almost 3000 Sikhs lost their lives in the violence subsequent to the assassination of the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. And subsequently, commission associated with these disturbances gave clean chit to several ministers, gave clean chit to several politicians. Right? You all very well know, last May 2014, NDA government led by BJP came to power. After the NDA government came to power, in the month of May 2014, government announced a compensation of rupees 5 lakhs each to the kin of the victims. The second point which the government did is, it appointed a committee headed by the former Supreme Court Judge Justice G. P. Madhur and subsequently G. P. Madhur committee recommended for reinvestigation into the cases. Based on G. P. Madhur committee's recommendations, now a fresh special investigation team to reinvestigate all these cases was appointed by the government and Mr. Pramod Asthana, 1986 batch IPS officer will head the committee. So, remember carefully, after the new NDA government came to power, two things happened. They gave 5 lakh rupees additional compensation to each kin of the victim. Then second important thing what they have done is, they appointed a retired Supreme Court judge, Mr. G. P. Madhur to look into these cases and based on Mr. J. P. Mathur's recommendations, a three member special investigation team headed by Mr. Pramod Asthana, IPS officer of 1986 batch was appointed. Now, this three member special investigation team headed by Mr. Pramod Asthana will look into the cases pertaining to the massacre of one particular community after the assassination of Indira Gandhi on 31st October 1984. It is almost 30 year old case, but government appointed a committee, three member special investigation team to look into the cases afresh. Right? So, this is all about the three member seat to probe anti Sikh rights of 1984. Right? Friends, let us move on to the next issue. Important issue, peace summit at Minsk, Belarus. Belarus capital is Minsk. 
and recently peace summit was held in the peace summit four national leaders participated mr vladimir putin from russia mr poroshenko ukraine and angela merkel from germany and franco is holland from france these four leaders participated before going into the details i would like to tell a brief about what is the problem in ukraine ukraine is in turmoil what is the problem you all very well know during the early 90s the then united soviet socialist republic which is known as ussr broke into several independent countries Ukraine is one such country Subsequently there is a fight going on among these countries to tilt towards west or towards Russia Basically all these countries are formed due to the disintegration of USSR Subsequently some of the countries are tilting towards Russia and some of the countries are tilting towards European Union Here in the year 2013 the then president of ukraine mr viktor yanukovych he refused to sign an agreement with european union here the point is major portion of ukraine wants to go with european union and eastern part and southern part of ukraine wants to go with russia I would like to tell you once again the major portion of Ukraine would like to go with European Union the eastern part and southern part would like to go with Russia then the president resigned and the new president Poroshenko took over Poroshenko is in favor of European Union but the eastern part and southern part of Ukraine want to go with Russia that's why infighting started and there is an allegation that this infighting is supported by russia indirectly western countries feel that the agitation which is taking place in eastern part and southern part of ukraine is supported by russia so because of this there is infighting going on between the rebels and the national armed forces in the eastern part and southern parts of ukraine there the fight is between rebels allegedly supported by russia and the national armed forces that's why ukraine is in trouble and western countries feel that the agitation in the eastern part is supported by russia in this connection a peace summit was held at minsk in belarus where these four national leaders participated no major breakthrough could be held but it was only decided to ensure cease fire that means to stop firing i hope that i made you understand the problem of ukraine and in more detail we will discuss sometime later right let us move on to the next issue We have already discussed in the previous classes that the base year was revised from 2004-5 to 2011-12 for calculating GDP. Now the GDP is being calculated based on 2011-12 as the base year. I have already told you in the last class that there are two changes. One is base year changed from 2004-5 to 2011-12. The second one is now the gdp is being calculated based on the market cost because of these two changes the gdp for this year got revised for the first quarter gdp is revised to 7% second quarter 7.8 third quarter 7.5% so if you look at the growth of third quarter i would like to tell you one more point this quarter starts from april 1st first quarter means This is the first quarter of the financial year. Financial year starts from April one. 
it ends on march 31st so the first quarter is april june period second quarter is july september period third quarter is october december period so during the third quarter the growth is revised to 7.5% so it is now the fastest growing economy in the world last time we have discussed china's growth went down to 24 year low and now india's growth in the third quarter is 7.5% so now india growing at faster pace than china so now as per the new statistics india is the fastest growing economy in the world right look into the next issue gold demand in the year 2014 down by 14% gold demand in india down by 14% and if you look at the demand the demand for jewelry is increased by 8% but the demand for investment is reduced by 50% people are not investing gold but for jewelry there is increase in demand but for investment purpose there is reduction in the demand if you look at the gold demand worldwide the total gold demand worldwide is 3217 tons out of which india share is 843 tons china share is 814 tons usa share is 179 tons if you look at the figures india is the world's largest consumer of gold followed by china china is closely behind and look at the figures india and china contributes almost 50% of the entire gold consumption of the world and remember world gold council tracks all these things the headquarters of world gold council in london right look into the next issue inaugural price of john maynard keynes who is john keynes john keynes is the famous economist of 20th century john keynes is the famous economist of 20th century and in his name one foundation charleston efg foundation established the prize for the first time and the prize winner will get 7500 pounds 7500 pounds and this inaugural prize inaugural prize means prize for the first time prize for the first time is going to mr amartya sen amartya sen is the famous economist who got nobel prize in the year 1998 and bharat ratna in the year 1999 and he is now the professor at harvard university and he is getting this inaugural prize right look into the next issue when it comes to sports the spectacular event of 11th world cup cricket tournament 11th world cup cricket tournament started in new zealand and australia i have already told you 14 nations 49 matches seven venues in australia seven venues in new zealand and out of the previous 10 world cups out of the previous 10 world cups four times australia won the world cup and last time india was the winner india won the world cup in the year 2011 if you take all 10 world cups australia is leading the tally with the four wins this time inaugural ceremony was held at christ church in new zealand remember christ church was virtually devastated by serious earthquake in the year 2011 at that time almost 185 people lost their lives now the world cup was inaugurated at hagley park in christchurch and the new zealand premier new zealand prime minister john k and the chief executive of icc mr david richardson participated in the inauguration celebrations right so the inaugural ceremony was held at hagley park in christchurch by the new zealand prime minister john k and the chief executive of 
the ICC, Mr. David Richardson. Right? Please don't forget these points. And it is being held. 14 nations are competing. Here, 7 in Group A, 7 in Group B. If you look at the Group A teams, New Zealand, Sri Lanka, Australia, England are the important teams in Group A. And if you look at Group B, India is in Group B. And along with India, South Africa, Pakistan, West Indies are in Group B. And if you look at the inaugural matches, both the host teams, host teams, New Zealand, New Zealand defeated Sri Lanka in the inaugural match at Christchurch. And at Melbourne Cricket Club ground, Melbourne, this Australia defeated England in the inaugural match. And India, for the sixth time, defeated Pakistan in the World Cup. India defeated Pakistan at Adelaide. And these are the inaugural matches. And for other details, we will discuss in the next sessions. Right? Look into the other event, sports event. 35th National Games concluded on 14th February. 35th National Games. 35th National Games, inaugural ceremony, concluding ceremony. Both the ceremonies were held at Kariyavattam Stadium, which was built at a cost of 161 crores in Tiruvananthapuram. And here, the mascot is Ammu. Last time I have told you, what is Ammu? Ammu is the bird, state bird of Kerala. It is great hornbill. It is the state bird of Kerala, which is prominently available in the rainforests of Kerala. It is almost in the stage of extinction. So, Ammu is great hornbill, the state bird of Kerala. Please don't forget this thing. And one more thing I would like to tell you, this total medals in the 35th National Games are 1334. Total medals 1334, out of which 405 are gold, 406 silver and 523 bronze. And if you look at the winners, services team, services sports control board, SSCB means services sports control board or loosely we call it services. Services team is the overall champion with 159 medals. 159 medals and this Raja Bhalendra Singh trophy is given to the winner of the maximum medals. So, this Raja Bhalendra Singh trophy goes to services and best performing state is Kerala. The other point which I would like to tell you is next edition of this national games is going to be held in Goa. Please don't forget these points. One is Ammu. Great Hornbill, the bird of Kerala, Kariyavattam Stadium, 161 crores it was built. And this SSCB is the winner with 91 gold, total medals of 159. And here, services got the Raja Bhalendra Singh Trophy. Best performing state is Kerala. Next edition will be held in Goa. And total medals in the tournament, 1334, out of which 405 are gold. And this tournament was inaugurated by Honorable Minister for Urban Development, Mr. M. Venkaya Naidu, and the closing ceremony was attended by the Governor, Mr. Sadashivam. Governor of Kerala, Mr. Sadashivam, attended the concluding ceremony of the Games. And these points, please don't forget. Right? Look into the next issue. BAFTA Awards, BAFTA 2015 Awards, BAFTA is nothing but British Academy of Film and Television Arts. These awards are given by this charitable organization of British. Here, three awards for Best Film, Best Director, one by Boyhood. I would like to tell few things about these films. Boyhood was shot over a period of 12 years. When the boy transforms from 6 years to 18 years, the film was shot during the period of 12 years. Then, Grand Budapest Hotel, this is the comic movie, this got 5 awards. Then, the best actor has gone to Eddie Redmayne 
for the theory of everything the theory of everything is the film based on stephen hawking's romantic story and best actress has gone to still allies heroine that is julian moore please don't forget these things and let us look at the next one annual grammy awards so this 57th edition of annual grammy awards were recently given in a ceremony in los angeles and in the grammy awards two indians got awards i would like to mention specially about two indians one indian is mr ricky cage got one award for best new age album trophy that is winds of samsara best new age album trophy that is winds of samsara and best children's album trophy has gone to neela vaswani for i am malala so these two music albums got awards one is mr ricky cage for winds of samsara other one is neela vaswani for i am malala and overall award has gone to sham smith of stay with me fame sam smith of stay with me fame and please don't forget the names of two indians it is ricky cage and neela vaswani look at the next one 65th berlin film festival ends here the main prize is given for the award name here is golden bear award this golden bear top prize goes to persian film taxi persian film taxi has got the golden bear top prize and this persian film is by iranian director jafar panahi he was debarred for making films for 20 years still he made the film he could not attend the function and on his behalf his niece took the award and this golden bear top prize goes to taxi persian film directed by jafar panahi then indian site nagesh kukunur got the best feature film of generation k plus category for his film dhanak let us look at the person who passed away the richest man in italy Michael Ferrero passed away recently. Michael Ferrero passed away. He is the confectionery king. He got Nutella brand of confectionery almost across the world. Nutella brand of confectionery and he is the 30th richest man in the world with 23 billion dollars of wealth. So Mr. Michael Ferrero is the confectionery king who passed away recently at the age of 89. With this we are concluding today's uh, uh, lecture part and please do join for question and answer sessions thank you have a nice time thank you